Hey, what's up everybody? TJ Milam, tjfitness.net. Today I thought I would talk about how to listen to your body. And especially as we get older, that is so much more important. I'm 44, as I've kind of stated before, but um, I know that a lot of people that have been checking out my channel are in their 20s and 30s. They're ranging from uh, 18 to 35. So what is listening to your body? It is basically just waking up every day and seeing how you feel. Do you feel tight? Do you feel recovered? Do you feel like you slept well last night? Did you get enough sleep? Are you drinking enough water? Do you feel dehydrated? Is your throat dry a lot? You know, are you eating enough protein and carbs and fats and putting the right things in your body? Um, I don't think you really have to listen that hard when you are younger, especially in your 20s. When I was in my 20s, that was obviously my prime. And um, the photo with me, if you've seen uh, some of my other videos, um, I think the one, yeah, the one that says get ripped in 10 weeks, that has to do with a specific bodybuilding diet that I adopted to prepare for the Muscle Beat show in 2007. And it was a lot easier then because I was a lot younger. I was uh, 28. I turned 29 in the process. However, now that is uh, way different. I was training four days a week and one day off and then repeat. It was way too much. I, I ended up getting really sick. I got a bad sinus infection. I was barely sleeping. Um, so looking back, I would have done it a little differently. I would have trained less. Um, I would have had more recovery. I just simply wasn't allowing myself, especially to sleep. So as we age, it's important to listen to what, you know, wake up and see how you feel. How many days off are you taking between workouts? I take off quite a few. I take off three to four days. And uh, lately I've been doing a, a split routine of upper body one day, lower body the next, repeat the next week. I don't always work out on the same day of the week either. It just varies. Um, so I certainly train way less than I did in my 20s or uh, 30s. In my 30s, I started training three times a week when I learned the method of high intensity. Um, and like I've said in other videos, it took me a long time to really say this works. This is going to work for me. But as I got older, it really works with the rest and recovery because we just simply need more time as we get older, especially into our 40s, 50s and 60s. I've also been training people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s throughout my the majority of my career. So I have learned a lot from training people who are 10 to 20 years older than me rather than training people who are younger than me or around the same age. So I can kind of sit back and observe my client's aging process. How are they taking it? How well do they listen to their bodies? You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They want to muscle through things. They want to come down and train when they're sick or something. And I'm like, no, get the fuck out of here. Go home, go to bed, rest. It is awful. It's an awful idea to, re to train when you're sick because uh, your body is trying really hard to recover and your immune system is working really hard. And you really need to get to full recovery till all the muscle aches are gone. Um, you don't have to wait till you can breathe perfectly. If you had an up, upper respiratory infection or uh, something like that you know you, you just need to get to a point where you're you're good enough to go lightweight you know just get some blood flow and then week by week kind of work your way back to full strength you know usually takes three to four weeks but that's not too bad i mean it's not like it takes a year or something you know don't get there's no need to get all uh beat down and depressed if you if you get sick you have a setback they're just going to happen more and more as we get older anyway, because our bodies, as much as they are designed to get bigger, stronger, faster, healthier when we're younger, ultimately, they are also designed to fail. Our body parts are going to fail. Muscles, joints, um, aches and pains are going to come. Maybe you're somebody that has migraine headache. Just shit happens. Just, just flat out. It's just going to happen. And it's going to happen more and more as we age, because our bodies are just not designed, obviously, to last forever. Um, so anyway, kind of maybe went off on a tangent there a little bit, but so listening to your body, you know, do, do you feel like you're recovered? Is all your soreness gone? Let's start with that. So 
let's say you work out, uh, let's say you do something differently than I do. Maybe you work, let's say you work out four times a week. I did a split routine once when I was, uh, 29, 30, that was, I was still doing the, uh, high volume training and I was doing basically Monday, Tuesday off Wednesday and then train Thursday, Friday. Um, no, I certainly wasn't fully recovered, but it did help having that Wednesday off. I remember getting just so frustrated if I had to take like a week off or something. I always wanted to take a week off at 12 weeks, but really that's probably not even soon enough. I would say every six weeks, take four or five days off if you're doing a split routine like that. Because if you're not getting any stronger and you know you have the capability to get stronger, uh, at least every one to two weeks, and it's just you're stuck with the same repetitions, um, or you know if you're still doing a one rep max max rep there. Um, I haven't done one in a long time. I just don't really need to. But if you're not getting any stronger, that means you need to take some time off because you're just not recovered. The rest and recovery is is absolutely key and becomes more important as I said earlier, as we age and our body just takes longer to recover, you know, when we're a kid and we fall down and scrape our knee or, uh, our hand or bruise or, or break something, things heal way faster when you're a kid. Right. Um, but then one day it just takes longer, you know, you break a bone or you, you scrape something, you cut yourself that they take, seems like takes forever and learning to listen to your recovery. So, you know, wait until your soreness is gone. Wait until you feel good. You know, you slept good and you had a few days off. Go back, hit the gym, see how you feel. Your nutrition. Are you getting around a gram of protein? You know, it, it, there's always going to be the argument like, well, do I need one gram of protein per pound of body mass, meaning your muscle weight, your weight without any fat or water in it? That can be a little difficult to figure out, but if you know your body, your body fat percentage pretty well, there you go. I usually just say, try to get one gram of, of protein per body weight. Okay. It's not easy to do, but there's quality protein shakes out there. You can research and try to get more protein that should help you feel more recovered. Hopefully you feel more stronger at your workouts, water, hydration. Just as much key as, as sleep, rest, recovery, nutrition. I think I average around 70 ounces of water a day. I did read where, uh, out of a book, um, oh, it's by Dr. Ellington Darden, and it's about training over 50. Um, and it was interesting. I read it years ago, and I was still in my 30s, but uh, it was interesting to see because he's, uh, he's now in his late 70s, maybe 80, I'm not sure, but he was pretty adamant about you should increase your water by 10 ounces every 10 years. So that's basically one more ounce a year. I believe that's right. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so, you know, it, you don't have to drink. I just say, I just tell clients drink until you, you know, can't anymore and, and cut it off at night. You know, once you get home, don't keep chugging the water, chug it during the day. And sure, we get older and we got to take a piss more and more. Well, you know, too fucking bad. <laughs> You're just going to have to do that because staying hydrated is key. We get drier as we get older. So anyway, that's kind of a, a quick uh, little dive into what I look at, how I think about rest and recovery and listening to your body. Um, you know, if I just don't feel it, it's not mentally. Again, it's physically more so. Mentally, sure, I had plenty of days where, ah, shit, I just don't want to go today. I don't want to go to the gym. I go, but I physically feel fine. I know I can go. I know it's kind of, I've had three, four, five days off. Let's fucking go. Come on. And uh, it might, it, it usually ends up being a good day. I was a little stronger, got a few more reps. Maybe the weight was higher. And then um, I'm happy I did it. So training is just as good for mental health as it is for physical. So key for and building serotonin in our brains, um, uh, keeping the dopamine level high. Uh, that stuff is, is uh, super important. Uh, but uh, leave a comment. Please don't forget to like the video. 
Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And uh, look forward to hearing from you. Just reach out anytime. Info at tjfitness.net or check out the website tjfitness.net. We will see you later.